So today I'm gonna to let you guys in on a trick for constructing these crazy types of identities that are often shown in math YouTube videos. So today we're gonna to focus on the object which is to the left of this equal sign with a question mark. Obviously we'll get to what this question mark is towards the end of the video. So we've got the limit as x goes to infinity of the sum as n goes from one to infinity of minus one to the n over n times n factorial times one minus a to the n x to the n. So instead of giving a standard derivation of a closed form for something like this, we're going to instead start at a classic integral and see how this classic pretty simple integral can be derived into this crazy identity. So the classic integral that we'll start with is this one down here. So we've got the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus x minus e to the minus ax over x dx. And I wanna point out everywhere in our setup today, a will be a positive real number. Okay, so, well, if you look at the individual parts of this integral, like e to the minus x over x and e to the minus ax over x, you'll notice that those are non-elementary functions. In other words, they do not have closed antiderivatives. So that means finding a closed form for this integral is probably going to require a trick. But given the fact that we've got a difference of two things in the numerator that look pretty similar, maybe that trick is to push this into a double integral and see where we go from there. And that's exactly what we can do. So let's notice that this is the same thing as the integral from zero to infinity and then the integral from one to a of e to the minus xy dy dx. So let's talk our way through that. So if we take the antiderivative of the inside, we'll obviously get an x in the denominator and then we'll evaluate that from one to a. There's something going on with the change of the order of that subtraction, which occurs because we've got a minus sign right there. So I'll let you guys check the details of this step, but it's not too tricky. Okay, now let's change the order of integration. So we can do that and we'll have the integral from one to a of the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus x, y, dx, dy. Now we can take this x integral on the inside. That'll give me the integral from zero to a of, let's see what we've got here. We'll have e to the minus x, y over y evaluated from zero on the top to infinity on the bottom where I changed my order of integration given the fact that I had this minus sign here and then this will be occurring dy. Okay, but now let's notice that y is just between one and a. So that means for all values of y, if we let the x term approach minus infinity, this will go to zero. So that means this lower bound just contributes a zero. This upper bound will contribute a one because e to the zero is one. So we've got the integral from one to a of one over y dy, but that's well known to be the natural log of a. And in fact, natural log of a is the value for our final sum and limit thing up here. But now we just have to glue these two objects together. So let's maybe look at this a different way. So let's take this thing, the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus x over x minus e to the minus ax over x dx. Let's expand each of those using the standard Taylor series for e to the x. So that's going to give us the integral from zero to infinity. And now we have the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of minus one to the n over n factorial. And then we'll have x to the n minus one. It generally would be x to the n, but we've got this x in the denominator. So I'll just like make that x to the n minus one. And then for my next term, I'll have my sum as n goes from zero to infinity, minus one to the n, a to the n over n factorial, and another x to the n minus one. And then that is all within my integral, so I've got dx there. Okay, now where can we go from there? Well, let's notice that the n equals zero term for both of these is exactly the same. And that's nice because that means our one over x term cancels. So we'll be left with the integral from zero to infinity 
of the sum as n goes from one up to infinity. Now we'll put those together. Again, keeping in mind that the n equals zero term just canceled, we have minus one to the n over n factorial, and then we'll have one minus a to the n x to the n minus one dx. But now we've got an improper integral. So let's change this improper integral to the limit of a proper integral. So that'll be the limit as t approaches infinity of the sum as n goes from one up to infinity minus one to the n over n factorial one minus a to the n x to the n minus one dx. Now we can start taking an antiderivative. So that's going to give us this limit as t goes to infinity of my sum as n goes from one up to infinity of minus one to the n, one minus a to the n over n factorial. Now I need to raise my power of x by one and divide by that new exponent. That'll mean I'm going from x to n minus one to x to the n. Dividing by the new exponent means I put an n in the denominator there. Now I need to evaluate that at zero and t because I've just taken that integral. Okay, but notice evaluating that at zero will just give us zero, so that's nice. Then what happens if we evaluate it at t? Well, that just puts it in terms of this limit. So we could actually just like do a change of variables here. Let's change this t to an x, and then we can replace this with really nothing because we've evaluated it x, keeping in mind that that evaluation at zero is equal to zero. And now let's look at what we've got. Well, look, we've just constructed this left-hand side of our identity. So let's summarize what we've done. We started with this improper integral, which we transformed into a double integral, and then evaluated it using standard strategies from a Calculus 3 class. And we got a value for that, which was nice. It was the natural log of a. But then we thought to ourselves, well, that's not super interesting. I've got this integral right here equals the natural log of a, but we'd like it to look more exciting or maybe more crazy. So what we did to make it look more crazy is we took this integral and then expanded it as an infinite series. And then since it's an improper integral, also as a limit, and finally got down at this crazy looking object right here. Then finally, we glue the two parts together and we've produced this nice identity. And that's a good place to stop.